1977, a certain toy manufacturer in Japan made their first entry into the home game console market. That company was Nintendo, and that system was the Color TV Game 6. Now, Nintendo is actually a much older company than a lot of people realize. They actually had their start in the late 1800s as a card game manufacturer, and over the years, they have had a very large number of different businesses under their belt, from owning a taxi cab company, to making a line of instant rice, to even owning a TV station. And most of these businesses didn't really pan out, but they finally hit their stride in the 60s with toy manufacturing. Now with toys, they got really big at first with this little extendable arm thing, and they had a really good line of light guns. But things really changed in the 70s when they started seeing the boom of video games. Nintendo's first exposure with game systems was with the Magnavox Odyssey, which is one of the oldest systems to come out in the US, and was popular thanks to the game Table Tennis, which became much, much bigger when it was basically copied and re-released by Atari as Pong. Now, Nintendo released the Magnavox Odyssey in Japan, and that gave them the idea to eventually make their own system, which we now know as the TV Game 6. This was actually something that was licensed from Magnavox to use the Pong design, and they actually made the hardware alongside Mitsubishi. The Game 6 was a very, very simple concept and system. It just had two knobs to allow players to play basically just six different variations of table tennis, thus the name the TV Game 6. You had three different modes, and each of those modes had a single or double paddle option. Now, the thing about the TV Game 6 that made it such a success in Japan wasn't the fact that it was just another Pong game, which, I mean, was a large part of it, but it was actually the most affordable one at only being 9,800 yen. So here we have the actual TV Game 6, and there's a couple different models of these that were made, and this is one of the actual first-line ones. So there's a couple things they changed later that were, well, improved that this one doesn't have. Uh, this one is the only kind that's in the white color. Later versions came out in a bright orange. The knobs in it are smaller, so it's a little less comfortable. And this design is only powered by C batteries, which is a little inconvenient, and later models they added a DC option to actually give it constant power. Now, as you can see, these are the controls in the middle to set everything up for the different game types, turning in all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's all in Japanese, which I can't read, so we need to translate this. Uh, the words are freaking out a lot. I think we need to actually take a photo to comfortably translate each word, because it's it is not happy at the moment. So let's check out the main controls on the bottom here. Now, I think this one said power earlier. Yeah, so this is the power switch. Let's turn it off. The green button is reset, so that just starts the system. And then I think this is for switching between the three game types. I need to highlight better. Yeah, hockey, tennis, and volleyball. Yeah, so those are the three game modes, and then there's two different versions of each one. So to actually play on this thing, we of course need, well, two players. So we brought on our local All Things Japanese, or at least the guy who's most recently been to Japan, Ken Bolito. Now, to be honest, guys, I've done a lot of research on this thing. I mean, obviously, we've been talking about in the video, but I haven't used it firsthand at all. So this is going to be new for everyone here right now. Let's turn it on and see how this goes. Hopefully not horribly. Put that on. And hey, hey, it's a color. That's the name, Color TV. It's really it's blurry, so like, yeah. resolution-wise especially. I mean, I'm sure it's like scaling <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> the system's from 70s. This is a 40-year-old system. So wait, this is so this is regular tennis. What it, what's different than the other one? Oh, it's oh. green now. <laughs> oh, so it's literally just a different like overlay. And the scores are the same, by the way. We changed sports, but it's just. Like, no, so it does add more. Yeah, it adds it adds more barriers at least. So it does actually change the gameplay a little. Oh, whoa! whoa. Oh, I love that you can change this midway. By the way, there's whoa. no there's no pause at all. There's no me. pause, and your positions are in the same place. I didn't generally. actually translate what these other switches do. Let's find out. Oh, that made you smaller. <laughs> oh, it's faster. Oh, geez. It's faster. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Whoa, whoa, what? Oh, this is so. This is the other mode. This is the double paddle mode. <laughs> this is how it's six games and not three. In the process of trying to get this to work on an American TV, apparently, this thing hooks up to Japanese Channel Two. Oh. In America, that's that's Channel Ninety Six. <laughs> I want to meet the person who's like an expert on this game, where they're just like, yeah, no, the game is six. Yeah, no, I never lose. Well, there's like no it's just timing. There's no sense of acceleration on the knob either. So it's like if you could turn the knob a certain yeah. point, and then it just kind of. 
like flat lines in terms of yeah. your speed. So you can't even, you know, really quickly just go down to the other side right. of the course. You just have just... to be frantic. Which they did fix in um, the, the one of the later versions of this where they made a couple changes. One of them was they actually made it so it would stop when you got to the edges. So you couldn't wrap around like this repeatedly. So this is kind of terrible, but the fun thing is that that was actually kind of an intentional choice on Nintendo's because after this thing came out, not even, well, one full week later, they released this guy, the TV Game 15, which was about 500 yen more, I think, and had over twice the number of games, and is basically just the all-out better version of what the Game 6 did. I mean, let's just even take this guy out. So, even like right away, something you could tell is a lot better, controllers that oh. you could actually hold instead of oh. being hunched over the same <laughs> unit. Uh, not to mention the fact that, as far as the internal hardware goes, the Game 6 is basically the same thing. They just handicapped it and didn't handicap the 15, so you had more game options to choose from. So, like with the 6, it's got a lot of games, but they're really just variations of the same core stuff. The reason why you have an odd number is because there's seven different games, there's two different modes, and then there's one extra game, which is a shooting game instead of a paddle one like all these guys. Wait, why am I starting with a tiny paddle? No. Yeah, they said that one of them is supposed to be a shooting game, but how do, you how do you shoot? Or just do anything? There isn't like a, what is a red button? That, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. how you, <laughs> you have to use the, you actually have to go up to the system to fire. Okay, so here's game 15, guys. Yeah, so I mean, the core gameplay is still more or less the same, but having an actual side controller is a big improvement over having two people loom over the same console box. Just Nintendo, keep doing what you're doing. You know, I, I think this is a good start. You just, you know, someday you might have a more successful system. Maybe do stuff with plumbers. I don't know. A really interesting takeaway from all this is the fact that this is the stuff that allowed Nintendo to kind of save themselves as a failing toy company and move on to making things like their own systems, like the Game & Watch, the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Game Boy. Everything up until now with the Switch is all pretty much thanks to Pong.